dear brothers and sisters, you're all wondering why I'm telling this, right? <clears throat> I'm sorry, before that, um, I have a very bad throat. I, I get cold only twice in a year. And my doctor said, told me that, you know, take pills. I said, okay, I'll take pills. Uh, but, you know, it, it stayed for six months. Every time it came, it stayed for six months. So, it was really terrible. Anyways, thank you. Um, okay, uh, my topic is Vedic Mathematics. I, I was interacting with a lot of students here, and everyone were excited about it. I was thinking, I'm, I'm more excited than you to tell this, to actually, you know, promote this. Okay. Uh, now, why did I tell brothers and sisters? I didn't come to that point. Uh, when Swami Vivekananda was there in the, what was that? Parliament. Parliament. So he said, dear brothers and sisters. So he wanted to keep up the Vedic tradition, right? So I thought, okay, I'll also do some sort of stunt. That, that didn't work here. Okay. And, uh, <clears throat> okay, let me just check my, I'm a little nervous. Uh, okay. Though I act, uh, I'm sorry, I act in some serials. So I love being in front of the camera. Uh, okay. So first thing is Rahul. I, I called him up and then I said, uh, you know, I'm going to give you a, a counter. Okay. Now, ha have, have you ever wondered why mathematics is called as the queen of all sciences? Anybody? It's a? It's a language of science. Anybody else? Huh? Because it's complicated. <laughs> because, oh, do you think queens are complicated? <laughs> Though wives are complicated, yeah. I'm, I'm still wondering how I should, you know. Yeah. Because every subject needs it. Every subject needs it. Can you relate it to the queen? Because, you know, we say queen is the, you know, it's the queen of all sciences. It's the first lady, you know. It's the first lady, okay. <laughs> Difficult to handle, okay. Lovely, but I never said it is in the queen of in the chess. No, I said, uh, okay, thank you, thank you for that. Um, queen can be anywhere in the kingdom, but a king cannot be. Am I true? Am I right? So that's why it is said that you know mathematics is the queen of all sciences. Okay, now, so uh, like most of you said that it is there in every science that you see. So it is also there in spirituality. So Rahul, just to tell you that you were telling me that, you know, the number line, I was very, uh, I mean, more than anybody else in the audience, I was more interested because a lot of functions and number line and numbers, everything came there. So I have a definition for happiness. It is basically limit n, uh, d tending to zero, a by d is equal to happiness. Any, any idea what I'm trying to say? Limit n tending to, I mean, sorry, I don't know, I, I get this uh, stuck, n always comes into my mind. d tending to 0, a by d is happiness. Okay, so what am I drawing? What is this a and what is this d? a is your achievements and d is your desires. Now, as and when your desires grow and achievements, I hope, you know, uh, all of us are human. So, achieving all our desires at some point in life is going to be very, very difficult because we start with two legs and then we start, you know, we crawl with four legs and then six legs. Am I true? Uh, so, you know, it's going to be difficult. So, when your desires go on less and less, I think, you know, happiness grows there. So, mathematics is in spirituality too. Okay, let me come back to the topic here. Now, <clears throat> what is Vedic mathematics? Have you ever wondered? How many of you have done Vedic mathematics before for all your CAT preparation and, okay, so, uh, good. So, how did you feel about it when you did it? Awesome. Any, any other uh, adjective that you can think of? Uh, I said uh, adjective. So, quicker math, okay? Elegant. Magic. So, reasoning. Simple. Right. Okay, so all these adjectives will hold good for with Vedic mathematics. So first, let me talk about 
what is Vedic about this and what is mathematics? Since I said mathematics is the queen of all sciences, with due respect to everybody, I can assume that Ved Vedas is the king of all scriptures. Right? So basically, Vedic mathematics is royal in its nature. Okay? Now, coming back to uh, <clears throat> well, what is all this Vedic mathematics? So there was this saint called Bharati Krishna Tirtha Maharaj who decoded some things in Sanskrit and then there were 16 formulas or sutras that he came upon and then there were 16 other upasutras. So you can call these sutras and upasutras as your theorems and uh, what you call the corollaries. Okay? Now, what, why is this Vedic mathematics so prominent nowadays? Now, let, let, I was just thinking sir, a few days back, I was talking to one of the, uh, you know, the scholars there. So, he was telling me, it, it was a very great idea that I came upon this. He said, uh, you know, uh, okay, let me ask a question before that. Can any one of you tell me without using a pen or a paper, what is the answer for, are you all ready? Are you all ready? Okay. 98765 into 99999. Okay, any other answers? So, you have seen the proof of Vedic math here. Am I right? So, uh, um, so, he said, those days, we didn't have calculators, we didn't have laptops, we didn't have tabs. All these instruments were not available. So they had to do all their, you know, calculation in the mind. And mind you, Vedas, actually what happened with Vedas, how did Vedas come upon? There was a theory in that. It actually, it was told by the Guru to the disciples. It was never written. Vedas were never written. It was only told. So the disciples had to listen to it and then, you know, get everything in their mind. And when they became Gurus, they had to, you know, transfer it uh, down to their disciples. So Vedas were actually, you know, it was told and then retold and told and retold. So it had to be a mind uh, game here. So that is the reason that you can see that there are a lot of methods. So they, all these Vedic methods are basically one line methods. So like you saw the answer that the gentleman gave was one, one line here. He didn't use a calculator, he didn't use a pen and paper, did you? No. Right? So that is what about, you know, Vedic mathematics is. Now, the second thing that I want, I, I want to tell you is how this is useful. So, let's try a small activity here. Are you all ready for the activity? Okay. I am not using any sort of PPT because, you know, I didn't want to. I wanted interaction from you. Okay. Right. Now, the first point here is, as we saw here, it is a one-line method. So, let me ask you, can you tell me 52 square? Can you tell me 52 square? 26? Okay. Any other any other answer? 2704. Okay. So you can see here that 52 is 2 more than 50. So when I find the square of 2, 2 square is 4. So I write it as 0, 4 and I add 25 to it. So 25 plus 2 is 27. So it is 2704. So the first thing about Vedic math is it's a one line method. You can give your answer without putting your pen on the paper, neither using calculator, anything at all. Is that clear? Right? Now the next second point, you can actually extend these methods. Right? Now let's take an example for that. Can anybody tell me the square of 512? I'm sorry, I can see a lot of you yawning. Um, I had to do this. There is no other way, uh, you know, teaching mathematics or telling what, 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 uh, what is so great about Vedic mathematics. Okay? Anyways, yeah. Can you tell me the square of 512? 251344. Okay. Any other answer? Anybody? So, you can see here what we did with 52. We saw 52 was 2 more than 50. So, we found the square of 2, which was 0, 4, and then we added it with 25. So, 2 plus 25 will give you 27. So, the same method can be extended to 512. Now, how much is 512 more than 500? 
12. So how much is 12 square? 144. So that is your first part of the answer. Now add this 12 to 250. Previously I added it with 25. Now I am adding it with 250. So how much is 250 plus 12? 262. So your answer is 262144. So you can see here that the next thing about Vedic math is, first thing is it is a one line method. The second advantage that you have is you can extend these methods, right? Okay. Let me come to the next, uh, you know, uh, 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 advantage of Vedic math. When you do your school methods, you always started from which side? From the right hand side. We always started from our right hand side. Vedic math, you can start from your left hand side too, right? For example, the question that I asked you, 98765 into 99999. Any other answers other than him? Okay. So, just subtract 1 from this. So, 98765 minus 1 will give you 98764. So, you can see that I have started from my left hand side. So, the left hand side part of the answer is going to be this. And the right hand side part of the answer is going to be just subtracted from 9s. So, 9 minus 9 is 0, 9 minus 8 is 1, 9 minus 7 is 2, 9 minus 6 is 3, and 9 minus 5 is 4. So, this is how simple it is. So, the third advantage that I have with Vedic math is I can start from my left hand side. Now, the crowning gem of Vedic math is a concept called as digit sum. For example, if I take a number, suppose let us take 524. What is the sum of the digits? 5 plus 2 plus 4. How much is it? 11. Now again 1 plus 1? 2. So the digit sum of 524 is 2. Right? Now this is a very, very simple thing. But when you take this out and then see the effectiveness of this digit sum, you will find its application amazing. For example, let us do a small thing. Can you tell me how much is 12 into 13? 156. So, what is the digit sum of 12? 3. What is the digit sum of 13? 4. So, how much is 3 into 4? 12. How much is 1 plus 2? 3. What was the answer for 12 into 13? 156. How much is 1 plus 5 plus 6? 12. Again, 1 plus 2? 3. So, you see here that we have got one of the, you know, the most beautiful thing in mathematics, in Vedic mathematics, that the digit sum on the left hand side of an equation is equal to the digit sum on the right hand side of the equation. It is so simple, but now you can see the advantage of this. This we use in cryptography. I hope there are a lot of computer scientists here who didn't want to be in the computer science uh, stream though. Okay, so uh, you can use it in networking and we use it in most of the competitive exams that we have run today. Okay, so these are the basic advantages that I have with Vedic math. So that is, that was my second point. Now the last and final point that I have to make here is, uh, since morning we have seen lot of Indianness in, in us. Have we? Yes? With all the speakers that we saw, we have lot of Indianness in us. Then why do we hate Indian methods? Do you all do yoga? How many of you do yoga here? So, I mean, let me come in MBA terms. So, how much, per, how much percentage it is? So, it is a very, very less percentage, right? And... Uh, how many of you do puja at home with all the Sanskrit verses? Very few of us. Every day, yeah. Not only during festival time, sir. <laughs> okay. So you can see here that we actually shun away from Indian methods. Do we? Yes or no? We, we don't. We don't. We say that we are Indians, we are proud to say that we are Indians, but we do not use our Indian methods. I hope all of you know that the recently concluded the Indian Science Congress in Bombay University, 
there was a, a professor who said that every uh, you know department that you take every field that you take vedas have given something or the other but the next day the newspapers came out that how can somebody say like that i was wondering why why do people always want to look at the negative give him a chance let him prove it the whole veda concept uh, you know is growing it's still in its infancy let's make it grow why can't we do that so that's exactly what i'm trying to do uh, so i have been to almost 200 to 300 colleges and i have taught more than 1 lakh students for the last 10 years and the first thing that i go and then do is i teach them vedic mathematics i think most of us will pay huge amounts to do the uh, what do you call the, the chinese method the abacus we spend lakhs of rupees or thousands of bucks on that but you know when somebody is uh, something is given free of cost nobody will take it i think then from next time i'll have to charge right so okay 158 uh lastly thanks for this opportunity that tedx has given me particularly sibm bengaluru i was excited and uh, thank you